Peking people deeply mourn for Comrade Zhou Enlai at solemn ceremony. Solemn ceremonies were held in Peking from January 12th to 14th to deeply mourn the death of Comrade Zhou Enlai, great proletarian revolutionary of the Chinese people and outstanding communist fighter. With profound proletarian feelings, more than 40,000 grieved workers, peasants and soldiers, government cadres and students poured into the working people's palace of culture day and night to attend the morning ceremonies. portrait of Comrade Zhou Enlai is hung in the middle of the main wall of the morning hall. Lying in state beneath it is the casket containing the ashes of Comrade Zhou Enlai, covered with a flag of the Chinese Communist Party. The wreaths presented by the great leader Chairman Mao and the Central Committee of the Communist Party of China. Wreaths from other Chinese party and state leaders. The wreath from Comrade Deng Ying Chao, member of the Party Central Committee and Comrade Zhou Enlai's old comrade in arms and widow. Wreaths presented by the Standing Committee of the National People's Congress, the State Council, the Military Commission of the Chinese Communist Party Central Committee, the National Committee of the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference, the departments under the Party Central Committee, the government and the Chinese People's Liberation Army. Reads from the party committees and revolutionary committees of the 29 provinces, municipalities and autonomous regions and from patriotic compatriots of Taiwan province. There are also reads from overseas Chinese and from compatriots in Hong Kong and Macau. The wreath presented by comrade Kim Il-sung was brought specially from Pyongyang.
reads from Comrade Enver Hoxha and Comrade Nikolai Ceausescu. Reads from the Central Committee of the Burmese Communist Party, the Central Committee of the Communist Party of Thailand, the Central Committee of the Communist Party of Malaya, the delegation of the Central Committee of the Indonesian Communist Party, and many other Marxist-Leninist partisan organizations. There are also wreaths presented by many state leaders and governments of foreign countries, diplomatic missions in Peking, ambassadors to China, and embassies of many countries in Peking, as well as foreign guests, foreign experts, students, and trainees now in Peking. Three days running, silent streams of grieved workers, peasants, PLA fighters, government carders, and people of all walks of life poured into the hall of mourning to observe silence before the premier's portrait and pay last respects to him. Loyal to the party and the people, Comrade Zhou and Lai fought heroically and with utter devotion for the implementation of Chairman Mao's proletarian revolutionary line and for the victory of the cause of the Chinese people's liberation and the cause of communism, to which he selflessly dedicated all his energies throughout his life. Under the leadership of Chairman Mao, Comrade Zhou and Lai made indelible contributions and performed immortal services to the struggle for the victory of the cause of socialist revolution and construction, and to the struggle against imperialism, social imperialism, and modern revisionism. And thus, won the wholehearted love, respect, and admiration of the whole party, the whole army, and the people of the whole country. More than 2,500 foreign friends now visiting or permanently stationed in Peking went to the Working People's Palace of Culture to pay last respects to the late Premier. They include 
Thakin Bhatin Tin, chairman of the Central Committee of the Communist Party of Burma. Yusuf Ajitorup, head of the delegation of the Central Committee of the Communist Party of Indonesia. The Korean Post and Telecommunication Delegation and delegations from Ethiopia and Japan. American friends Frank and Ruth Coe and Saul Adler. British friend Pat Adler and other foreign friends. Foreign experts in Peking pay last respects to Premier Zhou Enlai. Foreign students and trainees in Peking paying last respects to Premier Zhou Enlai. Attending the morning ceremony are also diplomatic envoys of various countries to China and diplomatic officials. Representing Afghanistan, Albania, Algeria, Argentina, Rwanda, Cameroons, Australia, Austria, Benin, Belgium, Brazil, Bulgaria, Burundi, Burma, Democratic Cambodia, Canada, Chad, Sudan, Chile, Congo, Cuba, Czechoslovakia, the Korean Democratic People's Republic, the Vietnam Democratic Republic and the Republic of South Vietnam. The Yemen Arab Republic, Denmark, Egypt, Ethiopia, Lebanon, the German Federal Republic, Finland, France, Gabon, Mongolia, the German Democratic Republic, Greece, 
Guinea, Guyana, Hungary, India, Iran, Iraq, Italy, Japan. Kuwait, Laos, Madagascar, Malaysia, Mali, Mauritania, Mauritius, Mexico, Morocco, the Netherlands, New Zealand, Norway, Nepal, Niger, Nigeria, Pakistan, the Philippines, Peru, Poland, Romania, Senegal, Sierra Leone, Somalia, Spain, Sri Lanka, Ghana, Sweden, Switzerland, Syria, Tanzania, Thailand, Togo, Turkey, Tunisia, Uganda, the USSR, the United Kingdom, Upper Volta, the People's Democratic Republic of Yemen, Yugoslavia, Venezuela, Zaira, and Zambia and representative of the mission of the Palestine Liberation Organization in Peking and representative of the Liaison Office of the United States of America in China. the death of comrade Zhou Enlai, the people in Peking are resolved to turn grief into strength. Under the leadership of the party central committee headed by the great leader Chairman Mao, they will remain united, take class trouble as the key link, and always forge ahead in accordance with Chairman Mao's proletarian revolutionary line. The people in the Chinese capital say, to learn from the Premier, we must grasp class struggle from beginning to end and carry the socialist revolution through to the end. On the industrial front, the workers are instilling their profound feelings for the Premier into the socialist revolution and construction as homage to the beloved and respected Premier. They are taking concrete action to grasp revolution and promote production and are striving to fulfill the grand goal of building China into a modern, powerful socialist country set forth by the Premier on behalf of the Party Central Committee at the 4th National People's Congress.
The poor and lower middle peasants of Peking are also resolved to turn grief into strength, firmly grasp class struggle, actively repudiate capitalism, build socialism in a big way, and strive to popularize the Dajai type counties. Commanders and fighters of the PLA say, under the leadership of Chairman Mao, Premier Zhou Enlai made indelible contributions to the building and developing of the glorious Chinese People's Liberation Army. His revolutionary spirit and noble qualities will always remain engraved on our minds. We must maintain revolutionary vigilance and stand guard on our combat posts to defend the great socialist motherland.